Hi, and welcome to episode 19 of River's Knitting Chronicles. I'm River, and I'm really happy to see you again this week. Yep, we're, is this two or three in a row? We're, we're booking along, doing really well. The first thing Al is visiting, he hasn't talked to me all day, but now he's here. Hi. Sorry, I, he's big and fluffy, and I don't necessarily want to pick him up, but okay, if he keeps whining, then I will let him make a cameo. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is our sock caper, um, sock challenge that I was challenged to by Hazel. I hope I'm saying it right. It looks like that's how it's pronounced, but it's spelled really cool instead of, well, not that the normal spelling isn't cool, but she spells it really amazing. Awesome. So anyway, I have finished the entire leg and I have finished the setup row to start knitting the heel. I am knitting it in Miss Babs. I am very nervous. This ball is really small for having basically a sock and a half left to go. It's the yarn that I used for the Lebowski sock, and I thought since that was three colors that there'd be enough left that I could probably do the two of pairs of this sock. Um, so it's going to be kind of a cross your fingers and hope thing when it comes to yarn, but this is how much I have left, and I am absolutely just about to start, like I'm on the rows for the heels. So here's how the leg looks. And you see the beads and the blue and uh, amber beads are all through it, but the amber beads are hidden. Um, looking on the pattern page, I have a feeling that the, the main pick from the pattern page would have had the center beads too, but you don't even see that they exist. I'm very tempted to just not do them in the other sock, but if they were for me, I wouldn't. But since they're a gift, I feel like they should match, even if you can't tell that those others um, are in there. I've had no more mess-ups. I take that back. There's been a few times when I've gotten to, there's a yarn over right near the end, and I keep missing it, but it's an easy enough fix to just do a make one and it makes the hole just fine and you can't even tell so there's no like total mess ups that's one of the things I love about lace it's so easy to keep up with where you are and where you're going and even though this might look terribly complicated it's really really not and it got really intuitive fairly quickly so I'm on so this is going to be the back because I'm about to go back across for the first row in the heel flap. And this, in case you weren't watching last week, the pattern is called Bling and it is by Adrian Fong who goes by Belly Button Knits on Ravelry and she's an amazing designer. She's my favorite sock designer at this... Now she's been my favorite sock designer for a while. She does really cool lacy intricate things like this and I really like them. It has directions for um, a little bling, bada bling, and a whole lot of bling. And so my plan was to do a whole lot of bling, um, but I'm a little unsure about putting beads in the heel. Um, I'm, I'm debating not putting... they. From what, if I'm understanding correctly, I, I just glanced ahead. Um, it'll just continue these, so they'll be on the side of the heel, not necessarily the back of the shoe. So for that, I think I, I'm leaning toward going ahead and doing them, because in the picture on the pattern page, it's so pretty with those going all the way down. Um, and then it also, for the bada bling or whole, I can't remember which one was the most beads. These travel across the top of the foot as well. So, but they're so small and like I can put my hand in here and I don't really feel them. So I don't think, again, if they were for me, I'd totally do it and not, but since they're a present, that's, that's where the, the mental debate comes in. So I'm sorry about that. I 
thought I was going to have, so anyway, um, I'm about to do the heel flap. I will probably work on the heel flap while I watch this back and make sure I didn't have anything weird hang out of my nose or whatever. And um, so I'll be working on the foot this week. It is my last week of actual, my last full week of teaching for this week. And it's the end of the nine weeks. So it's a lot of culmination things. My English students are writing, are finally at the stage where they're sitting down and writing their final papers for the nine weeks, which we've been working on all nine weeks, but we were working on it in small sections. And so they didn't realize that's what they were doing. And I totally tricked them. So yeah, now they're like, what? We're supposed to make a paper out of this? Um, yeah. So <laughs> that's been, that's been interesting. Um, and my, Acting students are doing scenes from Tennessee Williams this, they're continuing. We started at the end of last week and those are continuing through this week. So it's a lot of kind of watching people perform, um, having people, you know, culmination of, of what we've been doing for the nine weeks, which means that actually my plate is lighter. So that's really nice. And next week I'm going to be out the last actual teaching day because my son is in, he has the Nutcracker where they do it during the day on a school day for um, local elementary schools. Um, they bus the kids over to, they, do, they perform at Florida State. So they bus the kids over to Florida State and they see the show. So I'll be out with him for that. So yeah, my time is really short before the holidays. I'm very excited. So as you know, my plan is to knit as many presents as possible I do wish I'd started earlier, but that's okay. I, I wasn't in a place really to have started earlier. But so today I had hoped to have the start of a gift for my daughter's boyfriend that I could show you. And so this morning I got out a skein of Malabrigo Superwash, which is what I'm using for this project. And I got out my organic swift which is my knees and my organic ball winder which are my hands and it's malabrigo so i'm betting that you have figured out what happened yep big old mess and so i spent pretty much the entirety of the day oh come on i spent pretty much the entirety of the day um un tangling that skein of yarn. I have two of them and I was tempted multiple times to put that one aside and try to do the other one. And I thought, no, if what I'm supposed to be doing today is untangling skeins, that one will just tangle up too. So I got really close to the end and finally gave up and cut off probably 20 yards or so and just said, forget it. And then I went ahead and cast on thinking, well, at least I'll have a cast on and we'll have started. The pattern, okay, first off, let me show you the pattern that I'm making because it's really cool. Okay, how, he's a huge Whovian. How awesome is this? I'm trying to get it straight, guys, really I am. Is that not the coolest? So it's a police box scarf and the pattern is called police box scarf by pen wiper and it is a free pattern on Ravelry and so my blue isn't perfect TARDIS blue but um, in watching various episodes I've realized the TARDIS does change it, it the shade of blue can be a little adjustable and so I think it will still be recognizable even in this deeper blue shade. Um, I do have some lighter blue that's more of that kind of corn flowery blue, but I only have one skein of it and it's worsted. So if it gets rainy and nasty British weather, it'll felt and that's not what we want. So, so here's what happened. The pattern, which is wonderful, like I'm not, please don't think I'm dissing the pattern because I'm not. Um, someone went to trouble to do this and give it to us for free. So yay for you. But I'm assuming that that knitter has a really loose gauge because she called for size sevens 
and I'm supposed to end up with a five inch wide scarf with only 40 stitches knit in the round. I knew when I looked at that, I said, there's no way, there's no way. So I was going to jump up to nines and my nines are in my super secret present for my daughter. So I grabbed my tens thinking since it's going to be two sided because you do it in the round. So the color work isn't, you don't have a wrong side. You've got the color work on both sides. So I grabbed my tens thinking it'll be a bit, you know, the gauge will be loose maybe, but it'll be okay because it called for worsted. It did not call for bulky because I wouldn't have stopped if it, I actually was searching for worsted weight things because I don't have any bulky that I can use. So I, um, I cast on and knit a few rows on my tens and I ended up with a three inch wide, like the scarf was this, this big. And I was like, there was just, there's no way, there's no way. Um, he's a, he's a big man. He's not a little boy. And like a, a scarf this wide on my son would be okay. Cause he's nine and he's small, but on a grown up, it would just look ridiculous. So I ripped that out, which is why all I have to show you is a ball. I ripped that out and I have loaded my 10 and a halves on my, um, cable and I'm going to try that. And if I still end up too narrow, I think what I'm going to do, because I have two skeins and then I have a bit of another skein left over from another project. So I think what I'll do is do like 60 stitches and then just center the, the writing in the middle of it. And hopefully that'll give me a wide enough scarf that it doesn't look like a child's toy. So I really wanted to have some of that to show you today because I thought that would be awesome for you to see, but I did spend all day pretty much working on it. It's just that, yeah, um, I spent all day figuring out what not to do when it came to this scarf. So hopefully we're at the stage now where I can do what I'm supposed to do with the scarf. And I'm hoping that it will go fairly quickly. You know, me and color work, we don't exactly get along wonderfully, but since this is deadline and it's not tons of back and forth switches, it's, you know, to produce letters and I can really see progress as I go. I think it'll go fairly quickly. So that is the other thing that I'm currently working on. Um, I haven't worked on my daughter's super secret present, but I'm hoping to have I, as soon as I get this scarf going, I'm going to get that back out. She'd also asked for some fingerless mitts, but fingerless mitts, I think, would be more time consuming than they get fiddly near the ends. And I feel like the other thing would be, I think she'd like that better. And I think it would go a bit quicker. I do have another thing that I want to make for her if there's time. It's, um, it will be another super secret. So if I, I'm not going to talk about it now and say what it is, but if, um, if I do get to it, I will definitely at some point or another show you and do the whole Kyra don't watch thing or, um, or just wait until Christmas and we'll do an episode where you get to see what she got and all of that kind of jazz. So, so yeah, so knitting has been really good this week. I've been so sorry if I just bumped you. I've been really enjoying working on that sock. It has been so much fun and just, I don't know, like I, I guess I'd forgotten how much I enjoyed knitting for a little while and I still kind of did it and I still, I mean, I still liked what I was doing, but for the first time it was like, yeah, this is why I like doing this. So I'm, I'm, thank you Hazel for challenging me even though we're both still working, I'm assuming. I haven't heard from you that you finished. But um, yeah, I'm loving, 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 loving working on those socks. And thank you to Adrian Fong for such an amazing pattern. Everybody, please go buy patterns from her and say that I sent you because she deserves to sell like a gazillion patterns. Okay, let's see. What else is, sorry, nose itching. Um, what else is going on? Um, I don't know if you can tell. But I got this cut off. I don't know how much shorter it looks to you, but it's, I lost a good six inches of it or so. Um, 
and it's parted on the other side now, which is a little weird for me, but that's how she cut it. And um, it looked, <laughs> it was one of those where it looked amazing, amazing when I left the salon and for the rest of that night. And I, if you follow me on Instagram, I took a picture and then the next day it still looked really, really good. But then the day after that I'd shampooed and I just can't figure, I'm generally not, sorry, I keep messing with my nose. I'm generally not a blow dryer um, since I have to, my first class starts at 7.50 in the morning, so we have to leave the house by 6.45. So there's not really time in the morning to shower and blow dry. So normally I, I shower and all of that the night before and my hair just kind of air dries. And then I just, you know, put it up quickly or do whatever. So um, trying to figure out how to fit getting it to look okay into my schedule has been a little tough. I did blow dry this morning. Um, it's still not, I think I'm missing a hand. Like, I don't know how to do the brush and the blow dryer and the hair at the same time. Um, I guess it's like knitting or anything else. I just have to keep practicing at it till I get it. But it looks a lot shinier and better than it has this week when I let it air dry. So I think I'm going to try to maybe blow dry at night and then see how that works. I uh, will knock on wood, see how that goes. And I guess I'll fill you in. Um, so that was a big deal. I did go to the doctor for the cough. My voice still sounds a little rough. It's not gone completely. They gave me a couple of different medications and an inhaler, um, not a emergency like not the cool kids inhaler with, you know, um, the round ones that you use just when, when you need it during the day. It's, it's actually like a disc shaped and it's for when I wake up in the morning and then before I go to bed at night, I'm, su I'm supposed to use it. And I am breathing so much better than I was, but I'm still coughing. So um, but it has only been a week. So one of the prescriptions ran out. It was, it was a, um, in case I had any infection going on that was causing, um, all the drainage. So, sorry, that's a, that's a gross word, drainage. My students hate the word moist. I don't understand why. I always think of cakes, you know, those, those cakes where then they put the fork on the piece of cake sideways and it like sticks because it's moist. That's, how, that's what I think of, but for some reason, I, if you say the word moist in any of my classes, the kids are go, ugh! Anyway, drainage, yeah, I think drainage is the ugh word for me. But anyway, so, so that's ran out already. Um, I also have a prescription cough suppressant, which I was dissing and saying wasn't really doing anything, and then I didn't take it when I was supposed to because I thought it wasn't doing anything and realized it actually really was doing something. So I'm back and I, I have a full month for that and I have like two months on the inhaler. So um, I'm hoping that if I give it another you know week or so that I'll see more. I, I do think there's been improvement, but um, it's not completely gone. I wanted it just gone and, and to just feel amazing. Um, I do think I feel good enough that I can start exercising again and it's warmed up considerably. So the plan is, especially like when my son is in dance, rather than just kind of sit there and watch YouTube videos on my phone, um, cause it's too noisy to, I can't concentrate to net. So that's kind of what I've been doing. Um, there's a small, it's called a lake, but it's really just kind of an oversized pond but it's got walking trails and stuff around it and it's diagonal across from where his dance school is. So my plan is at least when he's in dance that I could start walking again, uh, try to get some exercise and, and see if maybe that doesn't help as well. Hopefully it doesn't make it worse. And um, so that's that. Um, we've I've had great time with the kids. It was locally in town. They do a big, every December they have a day where they light all the Christmas lights in town and they light the Christmas tree in town and there's a parade and all of that. And so the plan was we were going to go to that yesterday and it's something that before um, we never did because there were people in our house who didn't like to do stuff. 
and so now we feel like we can go do stuff so that's great except that when we were leaving to go to the parade it was raining and that was sad and so we thought well it's just kind of sprinkling we can handle sprinkles for a parade and by the time we got over to my daughter's apartment to pick her up it was pouring and so we said you know what there probably won't even be a parade as heavy as it's raining and most of the floats were covered in the you know bunches of tissue paper so we went and we did some window shopping slash real shopping we went up to Joann's um, I have a idea thanks to Pinterest hopefully it won't be one of those Pinterest fails I have an idea for some art um, to put up in the living room um, scrapbook uh, pattern paper using pattern paper as uh, art medium and so I'm really excited for that so I got the stuff to do that uh, we went to Target and just kind of walked around and looked at things and oohed and odd and the kids took pictures of themselves where, where for some reason there are masks for like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the Hulk and Bat there's a whole section of masks not like meant for Halloween it's just in the kids toy section so they were putting pictures of themselves on Instagram, not not on mine, on my daughter's, um, of themselves as various superhero incantations. So that was funny. So we just hung out and had a really good time, and and I like that we get to do that. That's we're having a lot of fun. Things have been really awesome. Okay. Um. Oh, on my car. Remember I told you guys about the only bad thing was the check engine light. The check engine light went off all by itself. I'm very proud of my car. I gave it a little pat. I said, there you go. Good, good car. Um, I really think that when it came on, it people joke about the fact that one day it'll be 80 degrees here and the next day it'll be 50. And yes, we do get swings, but generally not to that extent. Like we joke that we do, but it's normally not that bad from one day to the next except for that day it was it had been in the 70s the day before and it got down to almost freezing that night and then i got in the car and turned it on and i think it was just the severe temperature change somehow the it i i really think that that had something to do with it and now that we've warmed back up and if you can hear it that's the air conditioner blowing right now so we're back up in the like high 70s at least it's warm out there and warm in here and too warm for windows open which is sad because i really liked getting to do that that was something else that we could never do here before so um but yeah so i didn't have to take it to a garage or anything the check engine light went off all by itself it's still driving great and so that makes me very very happy um <coughs> <coughs> There's one other thing that I kind of wanted to talk about. As you know, you know, I went to college for theater, and so I have a lot of friends and students who, or and former students, alumni, kids I've taught, who, um, and people that I went to college with, who are now doing things that you don't have to be local to experience. And so I thought I would try to, I've actually been trying to do this for a few weeks and I keep forgetting. So I wrote a note to myself this time to talk about some of the projects that I think you might be interested in. So one of my friends that I went to college with back in the 90s, he is a comedian here in the state of Florida. And he's done, he works out of Orlando. He works for Disney sometimes he does he does a lot of comedy clubs in and around Florida he's um, got a, he's done the American Idol thing where they warm up the crowd he's done Indiana Jones I think he's I never know which ones he's doing right now because he's always he's a busy guy he works a lot he goes around and does all sorts of comedy stuff so he also now has a some of his comedy pieces up on YouTube. And so I thought I would tell you about it. His name is A. Ali Flores, F-L-O-R-E-S. Like, we used to sing in him, Prince Ali, fabulous, he, Ali, Ababa. That movie had come out about the time we were in college together. So 
whenever you'd see them, you'd just burst out into song. It was funny. Sorry for singing at you. But anyway, so, so Ali Flores, and he has, I'll, I'll put a link to his Facebook, uh, he has a Facebook group for him, or Facebook fan page, or I'm not sure how those differentiate. And he's got a uh, YouTube so I will put a link to his YouTube. So if you're watching this on the blog, I'll put it in the show notes. If you're watching this on YouTube, and sorry I loaded last week so late, because I actually, as of right now, haven't loaded last week, so I don't know how I forgot. But I will put it in the down bar, but I'm not quite sure how to link, so I think I'll just have to put the whole address. I haven't figured out all that YouTube stuff. But word of warning, it's not kid-friendly content. So if you've got the little ones around you, don't click and watch his comedy because it's grown-up comedy um, for mature audiences. But it's really, really funny. And here's what's funny about the fact that it's funny. Like I said, we went to college together, and this was when I, I went back. Um, like, I didn't graduate from FSU until 2000. So I went to college for a few years, and then I took a few years off, and then I went back. So this was the, I was 19, 18, 19, and so was he. Um, and I can tell you, honestly, he wasn't funny. He thought he was funny when we were in college, but he really wasn't funny. And so I knew he was working professionally, and, and I knew he was doing these comedy clubs, and I was like, oh, really? Okay. Um, and when he first did the Facebook, the YouTube thing, just to be nice, I went and watched something. And I was like, well, you know, I'll just, in this way I can post to him on Facebook, hey, I watched it. Yeah, good job. But I was cracking up. Like, I was laughing so hard, like, no sound was coming out. And yeah, really, really funny, and I'm very proud of him and happy for him that he got funny because he didn't used to be funny. So uh, please go check out, follow the link on either the blog if you're watching me there or in the down bar on YouTube. I don't, other people do that, I don't know why, so it'll be in that down about box on YouTube and uh, go check him out and then you can comment that, that you're a knitter who was sent there from a knitting show and... I, let's see if he thinks that's funny. See, I'm not funny either, but I, yeah. But he is funny. He really, he grew up to be funny, and I'm very, very happy for him that that happened because being a comedian and not being funny would be a really tough life. I can guess. <laughs> so anyway, I think I have rattled on long enough. I actually have um, behind my face on here there's uh, the little tabs across the top and one of them is Facebook and my daughter had there's a message it's blinking that there's a message from my daughter and I'm absolutely not gonna check it while I'm talking to you so I think I'm going to go ahead and check it now and it's been 28 minutes on this show and I think I covered everything I wanted to do so once the kids have gone to bed and you've got your knitting out Go knit to Mr. Ali Flores and tell him that I sent you and have a really good chuckle. And if you're in the South Florida area, go check him out at a comedy club. I he's It'll be worth your time. Okay, so I will be back hopefully next week. Um, we're still in Nutcracker. I don't know if we're going to be at, if he's going to be in rehearsals at Ruby Diamond, which is where the performance is, or if it's at Ruby Diamond, I can't leave him there. But I might bring the camera and the computer with, I, I always will bring the computer, so I might just bring the camera and do the show from there. Uh, we will have to see. But thanks for watching and sticking around, and I hope you're having an amazing holidays. And... I will see you next week. Okay.